What's up, y'all? Got a video coming for you today uh, on a little reload. We, I'm finally starting to get a little further in this reloading thing, man. Uh, and the, this video here is basically the reason I've been putting this reloading off, man. Uh, I'm working with 5.56, and uh, it's got the military crimps in it. And I've just been dreading doing it. It ain't that it's hard. Um, it's just time-consuming. It's messy. It's slow. It's, it's boring. It's just monotonous over and over getting rid of these military cramps. Uh, and if you don't, y'all not familiar with what it is, because I had no idea. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Before I started thinking about doing this reload, I had no idea that it was even a thing. I didn't know. I had no idea. Like I say, but what it is, I'm gonna show you in this angle here. It's basically you can think of it, of it as like staking for your gas keys on an AR or for your castle nuts. It's basically a form of staking. It's just called a cramp instead of staking. Um, and I had heard that it's only on certain like Lake City brass and maybe one or two, but I'll just be honest with you. I've got several different head stamps of this 556 brass and every single one of them are staked. Every single one of them. And I'll show you all that here. Um, both of these are Lake City, like I say, so I'll show you these here first just to show you the differences in them. If you'll notice, see you got the Lake City LC stamp. You'll notice that when you look at that primer pocket, it's got an extra little ring it looks like and that's the crimping on it. There's a couple different styles of crimping. Some of them's got this full ring where it's basically just squeezing the metal. It's just like staking. It's squeezing to keep the primer more secure in there. And some of them have the four little stake marks around the edge. It's not a full circle. It's like a stamp, 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 like in a cross pattern like that. But there's the Lake City. As you can see, those are definitely crimped. Um, I've got a couple more here. These are stamped AP and PSD. So I don't know exactly which ones these are, but as you can see on these, you got a PSD and an AP, both of those crimp, full circle military crimps. Uh, I've also got three more here. I've got an Aguila, a Frontier, and a Winchester. And you'll see here again, every single one of them, every single one of them got that military crimp. You can see the head stamps on them. They got the Winchester over there. The Frontier in the middle and the Gila on the right. And as you can see, they all got a full circle military crimp on them. So uh, maybe there are some that don't have it, but every single piece of brass that I've got, no matter what the head stamp, has this military crimp on it. Uh, now, there's a few different ways to take care of this. Well, there's technically two ways, but I'm going to show you a third. Uh, there's technically two ways, but like I said, we're going to take a look at three of them. I'm going to go ahead and resize these right quick off the camera because I want to put that into a whole full different video, the whole loading process. This is basically just going to deal with removing these military crimps. So I'm going to get this brass resized and, and ready, and then I'll show you the methods of getting rid of this military crimp. All right, we got our brass all resized. Uh, we did a little de a little deburn inside the neck, a little chamfering outside the neck with our little tool here. Um, we didn't have to do any trimming. I checked them all in my case case, checked the length with my calipers. Everything's good to go. They're well within the over uh, the maximum uh, length case length on the cases. So a lot of times you ain't gonna have to trim, especially once fire brass. Now not always, but every one of these were well within spec. So we didn't have to do any trimming. Now I'm doing this a little out of order here. Normally I would do all this brass prep and then throw them i'm gonna throw them in the tumbler or in the vi dry vibratory tumbler and polish them all back up and get all that nasty case wax and stuff off but i just cleaned the case wax off real good with a q-tip got down in the neck with some rubbing alcohol got it all cleaned up because i want to show y'all just this just this military crimp process and putting the and putting the primers in right now so got our brass prepped now there's three different ways like i say really two but i'm gonna show you a third way that i that i, I figured out it work just fine so uh the first method probably the the quickest without a doubt is going to be one of these little rcbs military crimp removers now i don't necessarily have to be this brand but just a little crimp remover i'll show you in here on this other camera here the part number on this that's the part number that's for your small ones you got small and large and it's basically just this little tool here now it's made to fit on a little handle or in your uh, prep station if you got the prep station, but you don't have to have either one of those. I'll show you here. I'm sure y'all have seen it before, but I'm going to show you. It's just got a flat surface and it's got the little reaming, little reaming blades that's sticking out there. So uh, best thing to do with this, like I say, you can either stick it in a handle like this and do it by hand if you want to. I'll show you here real quick. But it fits right in this little handle, or like I say, it fits in that uh, in that nice little lineman. I think it is prep uh, brass prep station. But you can take it like this. We'll do this uh, frontier with this one. I'm only going to do uh, 
only going to do a few of these. I just really wanted to show y'all show y'all the uh, head stamps on these other ones. So I'll put these to the side. We ain't going to use them. So basically, you just put it in there and start spinning it. I'll show you over here since this is the close one. Put it down in there and you just start spinning it like that. And then uh, it just cuts cuts it out a little bevel for the for the uh, military crimp where the crimp's at. But the the quickest way, without a doubt, to do it, you get you a cordless drill, and it just does fit in the chuck of this drill and this half inch chuck. If you got a three eighths, it ain't gonna fit unless you just clamp it down on the threads. But if you got a half inch, you don't have to clamp it on your threads. So chuck it up in your drill. Take that sucker, make sure you put your, get your glove if you're going to be doing a bunch of these especially because you don't want your hands all tore up. I would, I would recommend clamping the drill down with some kind of little clamp on the surface. Even get you a zip tie if you want it and hold the trigger open. But basically just to get that bad boy running and boom, done, quick as that. But as you see, it slings brass shavings everywhere. So you're going to want some kind of mat or tray or towel or something. And, uh, but that's, that's easy as that. Like I say, that's super quick, but it's definitely the messiest method. And I'll show you here. I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but I think you can, you can, you can see that, I believe. See how it cut a nice little bevel and just beveled the edges off of that military crimp. So that's that one. That's the frontier. We'll keep that over here. All right, so that's the first method, and like I say, in my opinion, that's definitely the fastest method, but it's obviously the messiest because you're shaving brass off, so that's method number one. Now, method number two is going to be this swaging die. Now, I'll take this thing out so, so I can show you what, what you're looking at, what all it comes with. Now, this swaging die kit is made... It's basically made to run on a single stage press, but I'm going to show you how to modify this. There's other videos, but I'm going to show you what I did with it. Uh, it it gave, basically comes with the die body. It comes with two swaging rods, one for small, one for large. As you can see, you can tell the size difference of them. I got the small already in there. And it comes with two swaging heads, again, one for small, one for large. And then you've got your shell ejector, shell ejector, remover, whatever you want to call it. It's just a little, you see, it's just a cup with the hole that goes over this swaging head. All right, and I'll show you how you do that with this right quick here too. So, like I say, it's, it's really made for a single stage press because the way this thing works, if you'll notice, you slide your swaging head down in there and it's meant for this shell remover to go down in there well obviously it's not going to because you got your index and rod you got the index and collar on this on this lead classic turret press so let me show you right quick what you need to do to, to fix that issue here obviously we're going to pull our our turret head out get that out the way get your index and rod out the way let's put that down so a little easier to pull out get your index and rod out the way we got our turret out of the way Put that over here so we don't lose nothing. Now you're going to have to get this index and collar off. This is very simple. Let me get this head out of the way. Take your Phillips head screwdriver. All it is is a Phillips head over here as you can see. Just unscrew your screw. Now be careful when you take this off because you got your little index and your little square uh, drive little key in this, in, this, uh, in this collar. You'll see. I ain't going to dump it out but you can probably see down in there. You can see it wiggling around. I ain't going to open it all the way up because that's the, that's the best way to dump it out. So anyway, get your index and collar out of the way. And now basically what you got now is a single stage press. But the, you still got one problem here is you'll see what I'm saying here. Actually, let me, let me just show you why there's still a problem there. So basically what this is meant to do is you put that head on, you put that ejector, and then it sits flush right there. I hope y'all can see that. You can see in this, in this camera. You see that head sitting down there flush, and then what's meant to happen is when you lock that shell down on there, it's going to be super tight. Once you once you actually use that thing to swage it out, it's going to be mega, mega tight on there. You ain't going to be able to pull that shell off, I'm just telling you now. So what's supposed to happen is the collar of this little shell ejector, when you lower your ram on a single stage press, it bottoms out and it pushes it up a little bit and pushes the shell off of it. Well, as you can see, it don't work like that on this classic turret. You just don't go down far enough. So the fix for that is you're going to have to fill that space somehow. But then you also got another little issue here is where you've got a shoulder. So your ram's skinner at the top, fatter at the bottom. So you can't just use one single size washer on it or, or whatever you're going to use to space it. There's several ways to space this. 
Uh, the easiest thing I found super quick is to get you a couple washers. Uh, and I'll show you the size on these washers. It's, one of them's a, a seven, a three quarter inch inside, just a regular old flat washer. And then the other, side, other one I got is a one inch inside diameter. Another, just a regular flat washer. Now this one inch is a little bit too small. This is about 1.11 diameter on the bottom on this, on this rod here. So you're gonna have to take your Dremel or file or something and ream the inside out, which I've already done. Now the three quarter one fits perfect. You don't have to do nothing. But as you can see on this one inch one, I've taken my Dremel and reamed it out. Just kept grinding it out a little bit till it was big enough to, to slide down over my rod. And then also depending on the, the outside diameter of your washer, you may need to cut you out a little notch for it to go on there and clear this little uh, upright support rod. So now as you can see now though, slides right down on. I've made it just a tiny bit bigger. And as you can see, boom, no problem. Slides up and down easy. All right, so that takes care of that. And then the flat, like I say, I'll show you something else here. This three quarter one slides over the top, but now to get that one over, if it's just a three quarter inside diameter, you're gonna need to take this little key off that all you do is just work it out. I'm sure y'all didn't see much of that because my hand was in the way, but it's just a little hole that one of the ends locks into and then goes over. And that's just, all that does is it holds your, uh, it holds your shell holder in or your swaging head, vice versa. Because as you can see without that, it's just, it's floppy, wobbly, wobbly, but you got to take that off because this little washer here won't clear it. But then once you get that off, boom, it's cleared. So you got that covered and you put your little key back on there. And that just pops right back in, no problem at all. Then you take your small swaging head, take the small one, boom, pop it in. Good to go. Then we put our shell ejector back on now. You notice it still sits flush. Right there where it's supposed to at the little the little nub on the shell uh, on the uh, swaging head. But then now if you see what happens when I push it down, those washers have taken up the space and watch what happens here. See how that shell ejector it pops up then. And that's what's going to eject that shell off because that shell is going to be like I say, you ain't going to get that shell off by hand. You have to have this thing to pop it up. So now that's all it takes for your Lee, your Lee uh, Classic Turret to be worked. All right, now at this point, Here's the, here's the issue with this swaging tool, this method of it. This method is definitely cleaner because it's not taking anything out. All it's doing is basically widening out the mouth of that little crimp there. Uh, so it's clean. You don't have any brass shaved off, but it's definitely slower. And the reason it's slower is I'll show you here. You'll notice that rod, it just is big enough to fit in the mouth of that case. So, I mean, there's, there's little to no play when you, when you got that thing on that rod there. So the problem there is, I don't care how good your press is and how precision it's set up. When you put that thing on here or however you do it, it's not tight yet. So you're going to have to manually guide each one of those case mounts onto that rod. Cause if you just go slamming on it, you're going to, all you're going to do is tear up the, the, your case mount, the rim of your case mount. So this is slower because you've got to physically touch every case and glide it in there. So it's slower. It's definitely slower, but it is cleaner. So, um, all that being said, basically all you're going to do is run this bad boy down here. Just run it on down. Just guess for now. It ain't a big deal yet. Uh, look up in there. Like I say, see this, this is what I'm saying. This is the major pain or, but without looking, you could just guide it with your hand, but you're going to want to get it up on the rod there. Raise your ram up. All right, so that's all the way down. Now you take your, take your die, snug it on up, and see, as you can see, just, just that little bit of snug and wanted to stick it on. So bring it down and move this die about a half a turn, which, which I've, I've uh, come to realize. You, this thing ain't an exact science on this swaging tool, because you're gonna notice that once you get to a certain point, uh, it ain't gonna go no more unless you force it like a like the 600 pound gorilla AVE is always talking about. So this ain't an exact science on this swaging tool. A lot of people I've seen they'll do a little bit, check a primer, do a little bit more checker. That, that that's unnecessary, and the reason that's unnecessary is when you see my third method, you'll understand why. As long as that's reamed out or not reamed out, but if it's swaged out just the slightest bit, that primer's gonna go in there. I'm just telling you. 
So basically all you're going to want to do is uh, you can either start it here or you can feed it up there. But either way, you, you've got to pay attention to what's going on. That's what I'm saying. You can't just slam this thing. So it's going to take a minute to guide everyone by hand. But you get them in there, once you get them lined up, you can take a look down below if you want. Give it a good squeeze and boom, that's all the way in there. You can just see right there, it's seated. Now I could probably, well I'm, I'm about bottomed out, so that's about perfect with that half half maybe uh, between half and three quarter turn probably all right and as you'll notice when i pull it down i mean that bad boy's on there you ain't pulling that off period but notice if i go all the way up boom it, it lifts it up and pops it right off so that like i said this method is definitely cleaner there's no brass shavings there's no shaving at all it's just mashing it out and and on camera you really can't see much difference because you still got that little rim with this method there's no shiny place but I can promise you, as you'll see here in a minute, it, it definitely widened it out. So we got that one. We got the ream version. We used that one on the Frontier. Uh, and then we used the Swager on this one that's marked PSD. So we got those two. The Lake City Brass, we're going to use the third method on. So I ain't sticking them in here at all. So we'll show you what's going on here. Let me get this press set back up for my uh, priming. And then I'll show you what's going on there. All right, y'all. I got our uh, got to set back up with the, with the uh, shell holder. And got our small primer holder on here so uh, all you got to do is just pull them washers right back off it you don't have to put the uh, index and uh, index and key back on or the rod or anything right now because we're doing one step processes so it's just fine as you can see it's set up ready to ready to prime right there so got a few i got us four uh winchester small rifle primers out here now, before I do this, let me just give a disclaimer that I am no expert by any means here. I'm not instructing you how to do anything. I'm showing you how I go about this. Now, I'm going to get some heat over the third method, I know, but and I don't suggest anybody doing it. All I'm showing you is what can be done. So, for let's start now here. Now, I wash my hands up so they're not greasy. Normally, I would have my little primer machine up here loading the primers through the through the uh, little chute and all. But since we're only going to do a few, I'm going to grab them up here with my fingers. Just be careful. Make sure you ain't got no greasy paws. If you ate a bunch of Cheetos, go wash your hands because you don't want to handle these primers too much, especially with a bunch of greasy hands. So, you see, we got our small rifle primer in there. We'll start with the one that we did with the, with the uh, RCBS, the reamer type method there. And you're just going to work it on down. Get it on down there, boom, seated like that, right? So you notice that was nice and smooth. The bottom's super flush. I'll show you over here. And y'all have seen this before. I know I'm insulting, I'm insulting the intelligence of, of long-time reloaders here, but as you can see, perfect, all right? Perfect primer, though. So we got one there. Uh, we'll put the next one in here. Boom, got that one. All right, now this is the one we did with the swaging tool with the swage and die, I should say. Put that in there, same deal, go down, boom, nice and smooth, no resistance whatsoever, right? Went right back up in there, all right? Really flat, you can do the setup test. It's flat, got a little tiny bit of a recess if you want to call it even. As you can see, basically the same results. Perfect, perfect primer in there with the swager tool. Now, Method number three, and this is where if, if y'all don't want to see it, you're just going to tune out now. And if you're easily triggered, I'm giving you the easy trigger warning. You might want to cut the video off right here. Now, these Lake City brass, we didn't do nothing with, right? So they still got the military crimp just like they were. it has been no funny business. Well, I don't know how, how much you'll be able to tell, but you can see there's no chamfered edges. You can plainly see, see the military crimp still on this Lake City brass. All right. Now lake city brass small rifle primer there it is military crimp still in place let's see what happens now we go down with it oh we got a little resistance let me show you how to take care of that all right we had to spin our handle around because the ball this won't fit over the ball but as y'all can see this right bad boy right here is what you call a, a cheater bar this is a daytona harbor freight brand daytona jack handle let me show you how you get that primer in there you put that bad boy on there like that boom you see how that thing scooched on down there let me show you something right here right quick pull that bad boy on down clean as a whistle flat as a pancake stand up test let me show you something right here boom military crimp was not removed primer is looking perfect in that pocket with no problems whatsoever that's how you get it done right there 
Alright, look, obviously I'm joking about the jack handle. Y'all, y'all, ease up, ease up. I'm sure everybody in the, well, half y'all watching this video, this reloader's right now, is about to bust a, bust a vein in your head right now, man. Calm down. Don't go taking a jack handle to your dog on press. But my, my whole point of that was showing you the, let me show you even without the jack handle. We'll do one more of these Lake Cities. We'll do this last Lake City that we didn't, we didn't ream. I'll show y'all again. We ain't, we ain't reamed it out. It's still got the military crimp. Let me just show you again. No crimp removed. Now, when you get there, you get a little resistance, but you go on back, push it. You see right, right, right there. That wasn't nothing crazy. It went right in. It's flat. No problem whatsoever. Y'all see it again. Now, I'll say again, I don't recommend you doing anything that I'm showing you, but I just showed you right here that that military crimp does not have to be removed to get a brand new primer in that brass. So take that with, with a grain of salt. Again, I'm not suggesting any way that y'all do this. Nothing I showed you. I wouldn't suggest doing anything I've showed you. Don't even do as I say instead of what I do. Don't even do what I say or what I do. Do your own thing. Be safe about it for sure. I don't recommend anybody playing games with reloading and being unsafe. You definitely want to be safe with your reloading. But I'm just showing you right there. I mean, you saw, we just loaded up all them pieces of brass. No problem. Them, them other ones was from the other day testing, but they're all the same. They all got the primers in them. I didn't have to remove the military crimps. So now, will I not remove all the military crimps? That, that's that's for me to know and y'all maybe to find out but i'm just showing you you don't have to do anything to get that military cramp out but that was it man i showed you a, a messy method that's quick i showed you a no mess at all method that's that's kind of slow and tedious because you've got to work that brass and you've got to baby it on in there and get it into place and then i showed you a method that you just go you just go with it, man. It didn't, didn't take that crimp at all. And y'all see both of them primers went in no problem. Again, don't take your jack handle and put on your press. I'm just kidding, y'all. Uh, but if y'all did enjoy the video, man, give me that thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not because I'm going to do a whole little reloading for dummies. I, I'm not calling nobody dummy, but I'm new at it. So we're going to call it the reloading for dummies. I'm going to do a whole process of the whole brass prep and everything. We're not skipping anything. Like I say, I just wanted to show the military crimp on this one. So make sure y'all subscribe if you want to see what I'm doing with this reloading stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you safe ways to do it. Don't worry. We ain't going to take a pinch of powder here and a pinch of powder there. We're going to do it the right way. Don't ever play games doing reloading. This is, this is some serious stuff. So make sure you're doing it the right way. But again, y'all hit subscribe hit that thumbs up uh, like i always tell you again my amazon affiliate links is down below in the description if you see something down there you like uh, click it down there we gotta get a little little kickback on that even if you don't buy what's in the links when all you shopping i get a little kickback it ain't much but it's something uh so check those out again make sure you subscribe hit that thumbs up man leave me some comments below and in the meantime till the next one stay safe stay prepared and we'll see y'all soon